Welcome to today's class on the third chakra, Manipura. It means lustrous gem. And the third chakra is right at your solar plexus. So I'll just show you right there, solar plexus. And um, it has to do with your will and your personal power. So let's start lying down while I tell you a little more about it. Take a moment to settle on your mat on your back. Feel the body surrendering into the mat. And bring one hand below your belly button. Remember, that's your second chakra, the part of your body that's related to your intimate relationships. And now we're moving up to our third chakra, which is right at your solar plexus above your navel. And that has to do with your relationships in community. So we're widening the circle with each chakra as we go up the chakra column. So this third chakra is about personal power and personal will. It's about digestion. It has to do with the element of fire, which is transformation. And the biggest transformation of this chakra is transforming individual will into surrender to one's higher power. And using one's personal will for the good of all. So it's a wonderful chakra with tremendous potential. As you breathe and your body relaxes, you may notice movement under both hands. Feel the breath slow and deep in your belly, in your lower belly, and in your upper belly, your midriff. Now, when we did the second chakra, we did yogic belly breathing. So take a moment to connect to the breath in your lower hand, your second chakra. And notice how relaxing yogic belly breathing is, which makes sense because it's all about sensuality and pleasure in the second chakra. But now we're gonna bring that energy up into the third chakra. And the way we're gonna do that is by drawing the lower belly in and up. And you may take a moment to feel the organs inside shifting. And then as you continue to deepen your breath, you should notice that the breath is now largely under your upper hand the solar plexus hand. So you're no longer doing deep belly breathing. You're now doing diaphragmatic breathing. Take a few more slow, deep diaphragmatic breaths and sense the difference in the energy. This breath is very powerful and energizing. You may even feel a little lightheaded if you're getting too much oxygen, in which case let the practice go. Something else you may notice is that when you do your diaphragmatic breathing, it seems to automatically inspire you to do ujjayi breathing. You may hear the breath in the back of your throat, victory breath. So ujjayi breathing and victory breath coordinates with Diaphragmatic breathing, powerful energy in our third chakra. Let's take just a few more breaths here, feeling our personal power. And then let's roll over and we'll sit up and we'll do the same thing in a seated position.
So coming to Sukhasana or whatever seated position works for you, let's wriggle the buttocks flesh away. Sit up tall. Bring one hand to the lower belly, one hand to your solar plexus. And just start by nice, easy, relaxed belly breathing. And then draw the belly in and up. Take a moment to feel the internal organs shift. And then when you continue with your breath, notice how the breath is full and deep under your upper hand. You're now doing powerful diaphragmatic breathing. So as much as possible, remember to do that diaphragmatic breathing during class today. Let's bring our hands to our knees and we'll do some circles around, drawing the belly in and back, rounding, reaching forward. Feeling your internal organs being massaged. This chakra is about digestion and digestive fire, transforming what comes in to energy I wanted to say this is a very powerful chakra, but that's redundant because that's what the chakra is all about. And let's circle back the other way. Coming back to stillness, let's take some nice Stretches up, inhale, reach up. You can turn the palms to face the ceiling and then we'll stretch over to the side and you can feel how you're stretching the side of that chakra. So the adrenals are also part of this, your fight or flight. Inhale back up, let's stretch over the other way. back to center. Spinal twists are also really good for balancing the chakra. Come back to center and we'll twist the other way. And back to center. One more twist. And twist. And back to center. Let's come over onto our hands and knees and we'll do some table warm ups. We'll do the whole series, starting with a nice cat and dog. Let your awareness be right in your third chakra. So this will be the highest point of your curve here and the lowest point of your curve here. So feel that stretch in the front of your belly, that lift in the back. Imagine you're shining light out from your solar plexus, your own personal sun, and then shining light out the back. If you like visualization, just visualizing yellow, sunshiny energy. Massaging those internal organs, the organs of digestion, the adrenals, organs of power. Let's come back to a neutral position and we'll walk around to one side, squeezing the adrenals here, stretching the other side, and then walking back the other way. And let's continue opening one side and closing the other. Let's 
and back to center. We're coming to our spinal twist. Let's inhale, reach up. And again, you can stay right here or slide through and open. You can even bring your hand around behind you and try to hug your thigh with your hand, help it to spin your body even more. Back at the table, shine through your third chakra and down. Take a nice deep breath. Let's open the other way. You can stay right here or slide through. Opening here if you can, if you like, bringing the back of your hand around, grabbing your thigh to help you spin even more. And let's come back to center, inhale, stretch up. And down. Take a breath, stretch back into child for just a moment. And inhale into table once again for Sunbird, we're gonna send the right leg straight out and back. Draw the belly in and up. Feel the breath in your core. In your opposite arm alongside your ear. So you're supporting your balancing pose with a nice strong core. And down and in. Just take a little wiggle, a little second chakra there, and come back to tabletop, drawing the belly in and up, tucking your rib cage. We call, call that girdle in the core. Deep breaths into your solar plexus and send the opposite leg out behind you. Opposite arm alongside your ear. Feel that support of your core giving you the strength and stability you need to balance. And down. Uh, one more time, we'll stretch back into child. And if you need to circle your wrists or anything, go right ahead. We're going to come into a forearm plank. So let's come back into table and we can draw the belly in. Deep breaths into your core. Let's come down onto our forearms. Feel the shoulder blades down your back, the elbows pulling in. Turn the toes over and lift. And then we'll come forward and down to a nice plank. Wanna have your shoulders over your elbows. You're pointing your tailbone towards your heels. Drawing the lower belly in and up. Feeling the strength of your core supporting yourself here. And let's bring the knees back down and press back into child. Good work, everybody. Rest your arms behind you if you like. Let's turn that into dolphin. Let's inhale back into table. Draw the belly in and up. 
breathing through your core and down onto our forearms. Shoulders slide down away from the ears. Arms energetically pull towards each other. Turn the toes over. Gonna lift the hips. So now we're staying in this sort of modified down dog and then coming forward into plank from there and then back. Coming forward, strong core supporting you. One more time if you can, if not, you can do this on your knees. One more time, let's come forward. And press back, you having fun yet? And down and back into child or egg. Let's inhale into a squat or stay in child if you don't like to do squats. So we're coming into our squat and again, you can do a wide legged squat. You can support your heels. You can bring the toes together, heels together, do a squat like that. Whichever squat appeals to you today. But if you can do the wide legged squat, I think works better for this next one because we're going to do another spinal twist. But let's start by drawing the belly in and up, breathing into our diaphragm. Take a few breaths here, deep diaphragmatic breaths. Feel the calmness of the power in this pose because Malasana is a very calm pose. So this is the truth of the blending of will and surrender. It's a sense of peaceful power, not power over others, not egotistical power. Let's come to a spinal twist here, bringing one hand to the floor, the other hand to your knee, pressing your elbow into your knee here to help you spin your body. And you can stay here or reach up. Or bind your knee, bringing your hands behind you. Wrapping your arms around that knee. Focus on your uh, uh, diaphragmatic breathing. Inhale back up, come back to center. And again, if squat isn't working for you, just go back to easy pose and do a twist there. So let's bring the other hand to the floor. Bring your other hand to your knee, bring your elbow in front of your knee and spin your body, focusing on that nice diaphragmatic breathing. I'm so used to saying belly breathing. And then if you like, reaching that arm up. We're bringing that hand behind you, holding hands behind your leg. Wrapping your arms around your knee. And let's release, unwind, come back to center. And press yourself up into a forward fold. Draw your belly in, giving yourself lots of room to surrender over. And then bring your hands to your hips, lengthen your spine and inhale up. Binding to Dasana. So let's take a moment into Dasana. You can have all the tools you need to find a perfectly balanced to Dasana. And then bringing one hand to your lower belly, one hand below your rib cage. Draw the belly in and up. 
Tuck your floating ribs, that's girdling your core. Feel the breath in your diaphragm. Notice the belly breathing here. We're going to go through all of the warrior poses. So let's face top of the mat. Makes sense, right? For power, warrior pose. So standing in Tadasana here, let's really girdle the core. Step the right leg back, bending the left knee. So I'm feeling the energy drawing up from the pelvic floor, from the lower belly. Deep breaths into your third chakra and arms to be in goddess pose, reaching up overhead. Let's feel your strength, your power, shine energy out from your power center. The whole idea of power, as you've heard the military say, is to be so strong that nobody wants to fight you. That's what it's all about. It's not about fighting. A true warrior, goal is for peace. And let's come forward, find Tadasana. Let's draw the belly in and up. Deep breaths into your diaphragm. Bend the opposite leg back, bending the front leg. Find power in your center, girdling your core. Again, you can do goddess arms. We're reaching all the way out. Soft, steady gaze. The chakra is also about the eyes because a warrior needs to be able to see the goal in order to reach it. So you see the goal and then use your willpower to achieve that goal. And let's swing our arms forward, coming back to Tadasana. Good job. We're going to do warrior two as our meditation today. So if you feel like you cannot stand in warrior two the whole time, you might decide to put your hips against a support. If you can't have your arms out the whole time, you can put your hands on your hips. Or if you need to have your whole body against a wall, you can even do the whole pose with your whole body against a wall. So find the support that you need. And we'll do a guided warrior two going deeply into this chakra. Begin in Tadasana. Step the right leg out wide. Maintain all the Tadasana alignments, but now with the legs in a wide stance. Turn the right foot out 90 degrees with the right knee facing directly over the right ankle. Allow the left hip to come forward enough so that there's no strain in the right knee. Scoot the left heel back so that it's at a 20 to 45 degree angle. Keep the back heel firmly planted throughout the posture. Keep the left kneecap lifted and in line with the left foot. The heel of the right foot is in line with the center of the arch of the left foot. 
press into the big toe side of the front foot. Now raise the arms to shoulder height with the palms down and the fingers touching. Stretch along the underside of the arms from the armpits to the fingertips. Rotate the shoulders slightly back. Draw the shoulder blades down the back of the body. The shoulders remain relaxed and the arms lengthen in opposite directions. Again, with your hands on your hips if they get tired. Bend the right knee towards 90 degrees with the knee directly over the ankle. Check that your weight is evenly distributed across the triangle of support in the right foot, big toe, little toe, and heel. Once you feel stability with the alignment of the front leg, Draw the left hip back while drawing the tailbone down and the pubic bone slightly forward. Feel an energetic opening across the front of the hips. Lift the rib cage equally from all four sides, keeping the torso perpendicular to the earth. Tuck the lower ribs in, girdling the core to lengthen the spine. Feel the solar plexus as the center of the pose. Breathe into it. Sense lines of energy moving out the body in all directions from the heart to the arms, from the earth to the sky. Allow the tailbone to draw down and the crown to stretch up. Feeling space and openness in the shoulders, lift and lengthen the neck and turn your gaze to face out over your right arm. Bring your awareness to your legs and rotate the thighs open. Feel the opening across the front of the pelvis. As the hips open, draw the pubic bone slightly upward. Allow the sacrum to rest downward. Sense the natural core lift of the pelvic floor. Turn the waist and rib cage slightly to the left as you keep your head and neck facing over the right shoulder. Feel an even lengthening through both sides of the chest and back and out through both arms. Feeling the belly lift and the lower ribs in, hold the pose for three more breaths. Shining from your solar plexus, feel that energy going to every cell in your body. To release the pose, exhale, straighten the front leg, release the arms. Turn the front foot and leg back in. Coming back to Tadasana. Feel the effect of warrior pose on that side. Take a break, shake out if you need to, and we'll do the other side.
begin in Tadasana. Step the left leg out to the side. So the legs are a leg length apart. Maintain all the Tadasana alignments. Turn the left foot out 90 degrees with the left knee facing directly over the left ankle. Allow the right hip to come forward enough so that there is no strain in the left knee. Lift the right heel and move it back so that the foot is now at a 20 to 45 degree angle. Keep the back heel firmly planted. Keep the right kneecap lifted and in line with the right foot. The heel of the left foot is in line with the center arch of the right foot. Press into the big toe side of the front foot. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height with the palms facing down, fingers together. Stretch along the underside of the arms from the armpits to the fingertips. Rotate the shoulders slightly down and back and draw the shoulder blades down the back of the body. Bend the left knee towards 90 degrees with the knee directly over the ankle and the shin bone perpendicular to the earth. Check that your weight is evenly distributed across a triangle of support in the left foot. Once you feel that the front leg is aligned over the foot, draw the right hip back while drawing the tailbone down and the pelvis slightly forward. Feel an energetic opening across the front of the hips. Lift the torso up out of the hips by lifting the rib cage equally from all four sides. Draw the floating ribs in to lengthen the spine, keeping the body perpendicular to the earth. Feel the solar plexus as the center of the pose and breathe into it. I'm going to read you a beautiful affirmation as you breathe into your solar plexus. This pose is about strength and determination combined with effortless not doing, evoking the courageous hero within. Sense lines of energy moving from your center, from the heart out through the arms, from the earth to the sky through the spine. Allow the base of the torso to hang down towards the floor and the crown of the head to be drawn upward. Using the space and openness you've created in the shoulders, lift and lengthen the neck and turn your gaze to face out over your left fingertips. Rotate the thighs open and feel the opening across the front of the pelvis. As the hips open, draw the pubic bone slightly up towards the navel and the sacrum to rest downward, feeling the lengthening of the spine. 
sense the natural core lift of the pelvic floor. Relax the shoulders as you stretch out through the fingertips. Turn the waist and the rib cage slightly to the right as you keep your head and neck facing directly over the left shoulder. Feel an even lengthening through both sides of the chest and back and out through both arms. Girdling your core, belly in and up, ribs tucked. Take three more deep uh, diaphragmatic breaths. Feeling your strength and your power. To release the pose, exhale, straighten the front leg, release the arms back down. Turn the feet back in and come back to Tadasana. Again, if you need to shake out, shake out. I hope you're feeling really strong and powerful because we're gonna take this into warrior three. So standing towards the back of our mat. Let's draw the belly in and up, tuck the rib cage, breathing into the diaphragm, feeling that strong core that will give you the willpower, the confidence, the strength that you need for your warrior three. Let's inhale up and step forward and pick the left leg today. Shifting your weight forward. And then if you feel ready, coming over, feeling how that strong, stable core gives you the stability you need to come into warrior three. Roll your outer hips slightly down. Nice diaphragmatic breathing. Willpower. Sensing the hero within. <laughs> and step back into warrior one. And come on forward. Good job, everybody. If you need to step back, and do the other side. We'll start by gurgling your core, belly in and up, rib cage tucked. Deep breaths into your diaphragm. Inhale up and step forward on your opposite foot, right foot if you like. Come into warrior one here and feeling your strength and your power. And then a little leaning forward, getting a little wiggle room in that leg. Find your drishti. And when you're ready, if you can, take that back foot off the floor. Run over. Roll your outer hip down. You got this. Inhale back into warrior one. And come back to Tadasana. Shake it out if you need to, and come lie down on your back. Good work. So if your experience was anything like mine in that pose, doing warrior three, 
it started out a little shaky. And then as you got connected to that asana, you began to feel your personal power and stillness inside. Once again, strength and determination combined with effortless non-doing, evoking the courageous hero within. That's the experience I hope you had in Warrior Three. So taking a few breaths here. You've earned it. If it's safe for your spine, we'll do some spinal rock and roll. And bring the knees into the chest. If it's not safe for you to do a spinal rock and roll, just stay here. Otherwise, we're going to lift the legs and rock up and rock back. And you can just stop on your back with your legs in the air or go a little more energetically. Inhaling up, exhaling back with the hips off the floor. You choose whatever variation is right for your body. And then even if you're here, from here you can roll to one side to sit up, or if you're spinal rock and rolling, you can just come right up. I'm gonna turn this way. I'm gonna come into boat pose and do some variations here. So we're going to rock back onto our heels, lift our, oh, oh, onto, our, onto our sitting bones, <laughs> lift our heels. Again, you can stay here or lift your legs here or reach your arms out. So drawing the belly in and up and breathing deeply right into our core. And let's bring those legs in and give yourself a hug. Breathing out through the back of your body. I'm going to add some variations, but you know you can always stop at an easier variation if you like. So again, we're going to come into our lift. If you like, we're going to inhale up. Exhale in and give yourself a hug. One more time. Again, you can just stay right here with your heels off the floor or holding on to your legs or inhale, reach. And one more time in and hug. And let's come back into our boat one more time. Reaching your arms, take a deep breath in. We're gonna slowly lower down. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, and surrender. <sighs> Walk the feet in and come into a right angle position, drawing the belly back towards the spine. We're going to just tip one toe to the floor and then the other. Feel your core working. And then bringing the knees into the chest, we'll bring our arms underneath. Well, maybe that's not going to work for me. Feet on the floor, bringing your arms underneath here. Gonna do some water wheel. 
up. And down. Drawing the belly in. Pressing the belly against the spine, the spine against the floor. Keeping your lower back long. Then you can tap the floor or not. If this is too much, you can just bend your knees and slide your legs straight. And let's bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a hug, take a break. Maybe circle the knees. And circle back the other way. And one more hug. Let's open the arms out, either wide or goddess, whichever works for you. And we'll keep the legs glued together as we slowly lower down to one side. Stretching the side of the body and twisting. Inhale to center and lower the other way. Inhale back up. And over. Pull your belly in and up, giving you the support that you need. Let's do one more set. Again, you can hover the legs right over the floor. And back to center, give yourself a hug. I'm just going to switch around. Let's come over onto our bellies. Take a few breaths here. And even here, you can draw the belly in and up for a moment and just feel what it's like to breathe diaphragmatically. Although it's actually more comfortable, I think, in this pose, it just, this is definitely a belly breathing pose. So just notice where it's appropriate, where the pose calls for belly breathing and where it calls for diaphragmatic breathing. All right, we're going to do a half bow and then a full bow. Let's point the toes, press the pelvis into the floor, bring the belly in and up. So now we're going to go back to diaphragmatic breathing because we're doing something more active. Send one arm out in front of you. The hand that's pointing towards your foot, that's the foot that comes up. If you can, reach back and grab that ankle. Inhaling, lifting the head and chest. If you can, lifting the thigh, press the foot back. Deep breaths. It's going to be an intense stretch because we didn't do a lot of front hip openers. So be real, real gentle with yourself here. Keep both hips pressing into the mat. Just breathe into that stretch. And again, if you can't hold your foot, you can just lift the foot like that, flexing it or pointing it, see what works for you. Let's come on down. Take a deep breath, change arms. Point your hand that's pointing towards your foot. That's the foot that goes towards the ceiling. And inhale up. And again, if you can grab your ankle, go for it. Lift that leg up, but it's probably going to be very tight. So be very gentle with yourself. Breathe into it. Again, that's too much. Just lifting the foot and the knee without holding on. And feel your belly and your core pressed against the earth. Inhale, foot. Outer down your asana. And 
down, release. Take a moment and crop it up with your head turned the other way. And let's go for a bow pulling pose. So bring the legs together, hands behind you, pointing your toes towards the ceiling. Lift your head and chest. And if you can, lift your knees. And if you can, grab your ankles. Pressing your heels away from you, pulling the shoulders back, pressing your belly and your solar plexus into the floor. Deep breaths. Yeah, if this is too much, please just try that variation on your body. And let's come on back down. Come back into crocodile one more time. Again, here you want to release that diaphragmatic breathing, go into belly breathing. Let's roll over and sit on up. We'll do some final poses on the face. So we're going to bring one heel in against the thighs, perch the other leg up tall. Janusha Shasana. And stretch over that leg. Then we're going to bring our bottom hand onto our shin and the floor, roll our other hand back to our hip and spin our body towards the ceiling. So feel that twist in your belly, reaching out on up overhead if you can. Maybe you can see it better sideways. So this is a real third chakra asana, which is why I love it so much opening the whole side of the third chakra, twisting the body, massaging the inner organs. Just an awesome pose. You can do a variation, walking this knee further back, opening the hips even more. Deep diaphragmatic breaths here. Spinning your rib cage towards the sky. Inhale back up, come back to Dandasana. Nice firm core, take it in on these switch sides. Open the other leg in. Janusha Shasana first to warm up, exhale over. And then bring your hand to your shin or the floor, whatever your body will take. Bring your other hand to your hip. Let's roll that shoulder back. You can stay here, reach up or reach over. Feel that contracting and pulling in your belly, spinning your rib cage to the ceiling, opening your side body. Breathing into your solar plexus and sending healing energy, golden energy to every cell in your body. And if you like, you can walk this knee back a little more. 
opening up the hips a little more. Inhale back up, turn back to that leg. Stretch over. Inhale back up. We'll end with Marachasana, Sage Twist. So starting in Nandasana, let's bring the left foot in. Again, you can stay here with the foot fist distance away from your knee and cross that foot over. If your foot stays flat on the floor, in other words, you're not on the side of your foot, or you can bring your heel against your butt, but sit on both sitting bones nice and tall. Inhale, your opposite arm to pull the knee across the body. Bring your other hand to the floor behind you and rotate. And feeling all those inner third chakra organs being massaged, all of your digestive organs, the fire of transformation. Inhale back up, change legs, stretch out, surrender over. Inhale up and bring the other leg in, either foot planted here or crossed here or heel here. So we have nice and tall, grabbing the leg with the opposite arm, bring your hand to the floor behind you and rotate. Bring that right arm up, swing it around, uncross your legs, surrender over. And come into Shavasana. Here, of course, you'll let that diaphragmatic breathing go and allow natural belly breathing to happen as you relax.
And when you're ready, slowly bring some movement back into your body. Gently move, move and stretch in whatever way feels good to you. Roll to one side and make your way to a seated position. So I hope you enjoyed this class today, that you felt your personal power. You learned two ways to breathe, belly breathing for when you need to relax and diaphragmatic breathing when you need to feel your courage and power. And once again, I'd like to remind you of the essence of this chakra as exemplified by hero pose. Strength and determination combined with effortless non-doing evokes the courageous hero within. May you have peace. Namaste.